4.2 less than 2 derivative of a product of two functions. So yesterday we learned the product rule and we also learned why it's necessary. We saw that it was needed to find the derivative, the correct derivative of a product of two differentiable functions. So you need to remember the product rule and you need to be able to use the product rule to find the derivative of a product of two functions. So we will look at some additional examples in today's lesson. So what is the product rule? If you have a product of two differentiable functions u and v, then the derivative of the product can be found. y represents the product u times v. So y prime can be found by finding the derivative of the first function and multiplying it by the second function and adding to that the first function multiplied by the derivative of the second function. Verbally, the product rule says to find the derivative of the product of the two differentiable functions, you find the derivative of the first, multiply it by the second, and add to that the first function multiplied by the derivative of the second. Here's our first example. It is similar to numbers 9 through 12 from your homework tonight. Differentiate and simplify. So what you see here is a product of two differentiable functions. So this is our first function and this is our second function. So using the product rule to find y prime, you need to find the derivative of the first function. So you find the derivative with respect to x of 5x plus 3 to the fourth and multiply it by the second function and you add to that the first function multiplied by the derivative of the second function. So once you've set it up and again, this particular line is just setting up the work that we should do according to what the product rule tells us. This is how you find the derivative of a product of two differentiable functions. So in the next line, we just do what we're supposed to do uh, that we wrote in the previous line. So the first thing that you have to remember here is that 5x plus 3 is the inside function in a composition of two functions. The outside function is raising to the fourth power. And when you have a composition of two functions, the differentiation you, rule that you need to use to find the derivative of a composite function is called the chain rule. And here's the chain rule. If you have a composition of two functions to find the derivative of that composition of two functions, you begin by finding the derivative of the outside function evaluated at the inside function, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So here, the outside function is raising to the fourth power. So you will remember something called the power rule. So you're going to bring the exponent 4 to the front, and then you have 5x plus 3. To the third power, you subtract 1 from the exponent. So that's this part of the chain rule. So now you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So you do the derivative with respect to x of the inside function 5x plus 3. And then you're going to multiply by 7x minus 2 to the third. And then you have plus 5x plus 3 to the fourth. And now for the green part here, you need to find the derivative once again of this composition of two functions. So you have to use the chain rule. The outside function is raising to the third power. So you're going to do this part of the chain rule first and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So you're going to have the derivative of the outside function. You use the power rule, bring the exponent to the front, and subtract 1 from the exponent, and then multiply by the derivative with respect to x of the inside function 7x minus 2. So now we have y prime is equal to 
what is this derivative? The derivative of 5x with respect to x is 5, and the derivative of 3 with respect to x is 0. The derivative of a constant is 0, so you have 5 plus 0 for the derivative of the inside function. 5 plus 0 is 5. So the part that I circled in black is 5. 4 times 5 is 20, so I write 20, and then I have 5x plus 3 to the third, and then I have 7x minus 2 to the third. And then I have this plus sign. And what is this derivative? The derivative of 7x with respect to x is 7. And the derivative of the constant uh, 2 is 0. So you have 7 minus 0, which is 7. And then you have 7 times 3, which is 21. And then you have 5x plus 3 to the fourth. And 7x minus 2 to the second. So it says differentiate and simplify. So we've done the differentiation, but maybe there is some simplification that we can do. And one thing that you can do is recognize that you have a sum of two terms. So the two terms have common factors that you can factor out. So for example, both terms have 5x plus 3 to the third power. This second term has one more factor than the first term, but at least three factors are common to both terms. And then both terms have 7x minus 2. Uh, the second term has two factors. The first term has three factors. So at least two factors are common to both terms. So you can factor out 5x plus 3 to the third power from both terms and you can factor out 7x minus 2 to the second power from both terms. So what are you left with from the first term? You're left with 20 and you don't have any factors of 5x plus 3 left but you have one factor of 7x minus 2 left and from the second term you're left with 21. You don't have any factors of 7x minus 2 left, but you have one factor of 5x plus 3 left. So this is good. Now if you want to, you do have the option of distributing the 20 here, distributing the 21 here, and combining like terms. Uh, sometimes you may have an answer in the textbook that requires you to do that so that your answer matches what's in the back of the book. Um, I won't do that here, but you could do that if you wanted to, or you could leave it like this. But the one thing that we did do was factoring out common factors from the two terms. Here is our second example for today. This is similar to number 13 from your homework, and also... Uh, 14 as well. So this is similar to numbers 13 and 14 from your homework for tonight. And what you see here is you see a constant 2 and then you see a product of two differentiable functions. You may remember something called the constant multiple rule. If you have y is equal to some constant times a differentiable function f, the derivative of y is that constant times the derivative of f. So what we can do here is we can just write y prime is equal to 2 times the derivative of sine of 7t times cosine of 3t. And so of course you will have to multiply 2 to whatever you get from the product rule. So you need to have brackets so that's using the constant multiple rule. And then we will use the product rule. So we will find the derivative with respect to t of the first function. Multiply that by the second function. And then we'll add to that the first function. Multiplied by the derivative of the second function. 
Remember, that is the product rule. To find the derivative of a product of two differentiable functions, find the derivative of the first, multiply by the second, and add to that the first function multiplied by the derivative of the second function. And as we saw with our previous example, uh, we will have to use the chain rule because sine of 7t is a composition of two functions and cosine of 3t is a composition of two functions. So here we have the chain rule and we're going to use it. So we write y prime is equal to 2 times in brackets. We have the derivative of sine of 7t. So it's a composition of two functions that we have. The inside function is 7t. The outside function is sine. So the derivative of sine is cosine. So you write cosine of 7t and then multiply that by the derivative with respect to t of the inside function 7t. And then you have co multiplied by cosine of 3t plus now you have sine of 7x. Multiply that by the derivative with respect to t of cosine of 3t. You have to use the chain rule. So the derivative of the cosine function is negative sine. So you have negative sine. I, I would like to make a correction here. That's 7t, not 7x. Everything is in terms of t in this problem. So the derivative of cosine of 3t, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so we have negative sine of 3t, and then multiply that by the derivative of the inside function 3t. So now that I've set it up, I just go ahead and uh, continue, and I have y prime is equal to 2 times now what is the derivative of 7t with respect to t? It is 7. So you have 7 times cosine of 7t times cosine of 3t plus the derivative of 3t with respect to t is 3. So you have 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 and plus negative is minus. So you have minus 3 and you have uh, sine of 7t times sine of 3t. So what we have here is pretty good and you can leave it as it is. There's not really anything that you can factor out that's common to the two terms separated by the minus sign. So you can just leave your answer as you see now. We have example three here, differentiate and simplify. This is similar to a couple of problems from the homework for tonight, numbers 15 and 16. And the f one thing that you really need to understand about this is you do not have a product of sine and cosine. Instead, you have a composition of the sine function and the function 5 times cosine of x. So this is a problem where you do not use the product rule because you do not have a product. You have a composition of two functions, so the appropriate rule to apply here is the chain rule. So here we have the chain rule and we're going to apply that here. We have a composition of two functions where the outside function is sine and the inside function is 5 times cosine of x. So to find the derivative of this composite function, we use the chain rule, not the product rule, because we don't have a product here. So you begin by finding the derivative of the outside function. The derivative of sine is cosine, so you have cosine evaluated at the inside function of 5 times cosine x, and then you multiply by the derivative with respect to x of the inside function, 5 times cosine x. So you write y prime is equal to cosine of 5 times cosine x, and the derivative of the inside function, now you have a constant multiple here, so you use the constant multiple rule, so you will do uh, 5 times the derivative of 
cosine x. The derivative of cosine x is, of course, negative sine x. So you have negative 5 times sine x. So you can write that out front if you prefer. So you can write negative 5 times sine x first, and then you will have cosine of 5 times cosine x. And that's about as much as you can do for simplification here. We look at our last example for today, and this is similar to number 17 from your homework for tonight. And one thing that you've got to remember is notation. So when you see this, this means you are looking for the second derivative of y with respect to x. So you have to find the first derivative and then take the derivative of the first derivative. So if you look at the function y, it is a composition of not two, but three functions. So you have to use the chain rule twice. Uh, so let's go ahead and remember the chain rule. So it may be helpful for you to understand how this function is composed of three functions. So the function y is equal to sine of e to the 3x is composed of three functions. The outside function is sine x, the middle function is e to the x, and the inside function is 3x. So you have y is equal to f of g of h of x, and I can show you that this is going to give you what we have for our problem. So we have y is equal to f of g of h of x, h of x is 3x, so y is equal to f of, what is the function g? It is to raise whatever input that we have. Uh, it is to exponentiate whatever input we have with base e. So we have f of g of 3x becomes e to the 3x. And then what is the function f? Uh, it is taking sine of whatever the input is. We have sine of e to the 3x. So that's what we have. And what we need to do is we need to uh, find the derivative of this composition of three functions. And we will do that by using the chain rule, but we have to use it twice. So what does that mean? And this is just going to give us y prime. And once we find y prime, we have to differentiate that to get the second derivative. So we start with y is equal to sine of e to the 3x. So we, we will treat e to the 3x as our inside function, and we're going to use the chain rule. So we have y prime, the outside function is sine, the derivative of the outside function is cosine, so we have cosine of e to the 3x. And then the chain rule says multiply by the derivative with respect to x of the inside function which is e to the 3x, which is, of course, a composition of two functions. So that's why we have to use the chain rule again in finding the derivative of e to the 3x. So we have y prime is equal to cosine of e to the 3x. And then you need to multiply that by the derivative of e to the 3x. The derivative of the exponential function e to the x is itself so you have the derivative of the outside function, e to the 3x. Multiply that by the derivative of the inside function, 3x, which is, of course, 3. So that gives you y prime is equal to 3 times e to the 3x times cosine of e to the 3x. So to complete this problem, I need to find the derivative of y prime to get the second derivative of y with respect to x. And what you will see here is that y prime is a product. Now you have a constant multiple of 3, and then you have the product e to the 3x times cosine of e to the 3x. So you have to use different differentiation rules. Uh, so I can use the constant multiple rule and the product rule, and I will also have to use the chain rule. So I have to do all of that. So let's go ahead and find the second derivative of y. So 
So y double prime can be found as follows. We will do three times the derivative of this product that you see here and we have to use the product rule for that. So three times the derivative with respect to x of e to the 3x times cosine of e to the 3x and add to that e to the 3x times the derivative with respect to x of cosine of e to the 3x. So we have y double prime is equal to 3 times. So the derivative of e to the 3x, you have to use the chain rule for that. And when you apply the chain rule, you will get e to the 3x times 3. So you have 3 times e to the 3x. And then you have cosine of e to the 3x plus you have e to the 3x and then you have to do this derivative and you have to use the chain rule twice there. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine e to the 3x and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside function e to the 3x for which you have to use the chain rule and when you do that the answer that you get is 3 times e to the 3x. So your final answer for y double prime will be 3 times 3 times e to the 3x times cosine of e to the 3x and then the second term has a factor of a negative 1 so negative 1 times 3 is negative 3 and plus negative is minus so you have minus 3 times you have e to the 3x times e to the 3x you have a product of two powers with the same base so you can add the exponents and that will give you e to the 6x. So you have minus 3 times e to the 6x times sine of e to the 3x. And that is going to be our second derivative. So today we looked at some examples where we had to find the derivative of a product of functions by using the product rule.